Okay, so resetting all of that, I'm going to jump in the lecture about logo design for this week. So if you look at your module, I have this quick definition um, about logos. A good logo is distinctive, appropriate, practical, graphic, and simple in form, and it conveys the owner's intended message. A logo should be able to be printed at any size and in most cases be effective with or without color. A great logo boils down to two things, great concept and great execution. So when we jump into the PowerPoint, you'll see some of these logos, especially famous logos that you're so used to seeing, really don't mean anything. The meaning is associated with everything else that you know and understand about this brand. And that's why I said this is just one small part of branding. And when we get into branding, you'll understand how all of this works together. But it's really important for you all to be thinking in terms of simplification and marks that can that can have meaning and things associated with them, and then making sure that works with the typography. So I have some links here just for your own interest. If you'd like to uh, look at lots of logos, I find looking at examples really helpful when I'm trying to design for something. And some of these, I know Logo Pond, you can even search the gallery. Like if you're trying to work on a logo, say you're doing a dog logo, you can search dog and all of the logos that they have in this database that have a dog will pop up. So sometimes it's helpful just to see this as a starting point. Again, it comes back to, I've talked about this before, are you someone who likes to see and get ideas and does that help inspire you? Or does that help block you and then all you want to do is like copy something? Or sometimes you can just take a look at these and then move past it like in your own sketchbook and they're in your head and maybe you're inspired by them, but it'll keep you from directly copying something. But it's really helpful to see the variety. So I like to provide you with these links just so you can look at them and start exploring and how people and designers are creating logos and how varied they can be and unique. Um, there's lots of ways to do this with flat one color and then there's more illustrative logos as well. Now the one color thing used to be a very big deal before we started absorbing so much media for, for on screens because things always had to be printed. So you, if you're ever going to embroider something or screen print something, you need to make sure your logo works in one color um, and can be simplified that way. You also wanna make sure it can scale to be something really small. Um, logos can be put on things that are like super tiny or blown up to be really big. So you wanna make sure that it's simple enough that it can read both ways. And when you get into logos, specifically things like this that have a lot of gradients or fine lines, they're not gonna scale up and down as well as something like, like this one that's pretty simple. So it's just something to keep in mind. And I say this all the time, there's always an exception to every rule. And if it's cool and it works and it fits with what you're trying to communicate, then it's a good logo. Um, but if it's something that you're going to be using for a long time in lots of different ways, these are things you should think about. So you can also read this article I shared here that just shows some golden rules of, of logo design. With that, I'm gonna jump into the PowerPoint for a minute. So as always, My PowerPoints are beautiful. <laughs> so I'll start here. So this is the logo design PowerPoint. So what is a logo? It's immediately recognizable. It conveys a message inspiring trust, admiration, loyalty, etc. The logo is one aspect of a company's commercial brand or economic entity. Shapes, colors, shapes, colors, fonts, and images. Logos are used to identify. So you'll often see or hear people call logos uh, brand identity or identity, logo design, things like that. It's because it identifies what this is for. 
So this is a great quote by Paul Rand. A logo is a flag, a signature, a street sign. A logo does not sell directly, it identifies. A logo is rarely a description of a business. A logo derives meaning from the quality of the thing it symbolizes, not the other way around. A logo is less important than the product it signifies. What it represents is important, is more important than what it looks like. The subject matter of a logo can be almost anything. So I'm not sure if that makes sense. That's a lot of words that I just read to everyone. But what this is trying to convey is that what the logo is doesn't actually matter. Uh, we'll go through some examples of this and it, the Nike swoosh is in my PowerPoint presentation. Uh, things like Target, Target's literal, it's a Target and that's Target, but things that are very simple um, they don't even necessarily represent what this brand is, but it gets all of its meaning by what it's representing. So that's what it means when it says not the other way around. So you're not creating a symbol and then giving that meaning to your business. The business gives the symbol meaning. Or, you know, not necessarily even a business, any entity that the logo represents. So what makes a good logo? A good logo is distinctive, appropriate, practical, graphic and simple in form, and it conveys the owner's intended message. A logo should be able to be printed at any size and in most cases be effective without color. This was in my module. A great logo essentially boils down to two things, great concept and great execution. So remember, appropriate, that's the key word. If it works for what you're trying to communicate, it's appropriate and it fits. Five principles of effective logo design, simple, memorable, timeless, versatile, and appropriate. So timeless, you know, things can be trendy too. Good logos can be trendy. It depends on what you're using it for. Versatile means that you can use it in a lot of different ways. It's not constantly going to be putting you in a box. And now as a designer, when I design for my clients, I usually give them a set of branding tools. So it's not just one logo anymore. It's, um, it can be a lockup, which I describe as the mark and the type, and then they can have just the typeface, and then they can move these things around because there's so many ways now that you'll be using these. Um, now it's also important that something might fit in a profile image, like a circle, um, or it might need to be in a square. It can't always just be a long horizontal logo anymore. It's not just going on a sign or on a building. There's lots of different ways it has to function. And memorable is key too. When your client and the population starts associating that logo with your brand, you know that you've got it. Simple. Simplicity makes a logo design easily recognizable, versatile, and memorable. Good logos feature something unexpected or unique without being overdrawn. The best logos are the ones that have something unexpected in it. And um, it's it's so much harder to design simple than to design complicated. So something like, um, are you all familiar with the FedEx logo having that arrow in the negative space? That's such a great tool to add another layer of meaning to that logo. So here we have the Nike swoosh. This is a classic example of a very simple logo that has a lot of meaning that almost everybody recognizes instantly. Memorable, so following closely on this principle of simplicity is that of memorability. An effective logo design should be memorable, which is achieved by keeping it simple yet appropriate. So McDonald's is another logo, very memorable. Almost everybody can recognize it. And those arches have been around for years and rarely do they vary um, off of that signature arch and if you show that mark to anybody, even without the type, people can pretty much recognize it. Timeless. An effective logo should be timeless. Will yours stand the test of time? Will it be effective in 10, 20, or 50 years? This is why so many companies rebrand or you hear about a rebrand because there's a trend or there's something that is popular and you go with that. And then you think after a few years, oh, that looks really dated. That looks something like we would have done a couple years ago. Um, couple trends I see now all the time are logos being put in like oval or like almost like tombstone shapes. And I, I think that looks pretty cool, but I'm maybe in a couple of years, we'll be like, oh, we used to always put logos in those or like emblem logos are really popular for a while. So things come and go. 
And that was also something we talked about in the history with the Apple logo and how it has varied over the years, but we still know that that general shape of the Apple means Apple, regardless if it's in color or if it's embossed or they add some kind of texture to it. So the London Underground logo is what I use for my timeless example. It's been around for a very long time and it's still being used and it's very effective and it's a very simple polished logo. So versatile, an effective logo works across a variety of media and applications. For this reason, logos should be designed in a vector format to ensure that they scale to any size. Ask yourself, is your logo still effective it is, if it is printed? in one color, in reverse color, so that means the light logo and the dark background, the size of a postage stamp, if it can still be seen, or if it's as big as a billboard. Um, does everybody still remember what vector means? So vector files are created in what program? Uh, After Effects? You know, I actually don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you can create it in After Effects, but you probably can. Um, Illustrator. Sizable compared, to, yeah, so scalable. They are created in Illustrator. So you make vector files in Illustrator versus Photoshop, which is all pixel based. So when you zoom into something in Photoshop, um, you can import now. Photoshop will recognize your vector files from Illustrator. So you can go back and edit them in Illustrator. But once you rasterize that, which means you convert it to pixels, you cannot scale it infinitely anymore. So points to Danielle, she got that right. So here's an example of a logo that can easily scale up and down and still be recognized. So appropriate and relevant, how do you position the logo, how you position the logo should be appropriate for its intended audience. A great logo should be relevant to your practice. It has to have meaning that relates to the work you are doing. Now, Toys R Us is no longer with us, but it is a great example of a logo that is appropriate for the business. It's a toy store, it's fun, and that logo conveys that. And this logo has had a couple variations throughout the years. Um, when I was a kid, it looked very different than it did right before its demise. But again, it's a good example of designing appropriately for your clientele. Okay, gestalt is a word that I like to put out there. It's a very designy word. It's kind of like when we have to say Bauhaus all the time and it sounds funny, but it's a great vocabulary word for you to know. And what that means is an organized whole that is perceived as more than the sum of its parts. The central principle of Gestalt psychology is that the mind forms a global whole within its self-organizing self tendencies. So what that means is our mind automatically fills the gaps in when we see shapes, when we see negative space. And it's a really important principle in logo design. And you can see here, this is no familiar shape. When you see this, this panda, oops, let me go back, broken down and pulled apart, we can no longer recognize this as anything that our eye knows. But when you put these together, they're the same exact shapes and our mind fills in the negative space in those gaps and we see the panda. So remember this as you're designing your logos. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, have you ever like done scribble drawings or you have to find shapes and things, or if you're someone that does, you know, you look at clouds and you're like, that looks like a duck. Like you have that eye that likes to find familiar shapes and things. And everybody will do this intuitively when they see things like logos. So um, the way that the logo fits together and how people's eye perceives it is important. When designing a logo, consider negative space, maximizing details, creative, clever solutions, um, variable logo designs, purposeful color, personality, and style. So variable means like how you might switch that up and how the same logo can be a little bit different to give you some room for variation. Um, again, and this is from my very first lecture about generating ideas, get the 
basic um, concepts out first and then push for creative solutions. The only mandate in a logo design is that they be distinctive, memorable, and clear. So in other words, logos can look like whatever you want. They don't have to look like anything. A lot of times they can, and that makes it easy and fun to design, but a lot of times it really doesn't matter going back to this or even these arches. Um, they mean something to us now because we're so used to seeing them over and over again. The London Underground is a circle and a, and a rectangle. So just consider that as you're doing your own logo design. Open, popping back over to the module. Um, so this week, this, these are the things you have to do. Review this module content, which we basically just did. Um, complete your project and then participate in the discussion. The discussion this week, I want you to find a logo from a brand that you use often and do a quick analysis by answering these questions. Do you like it or are you just used to it? I feel like that's the case for a lot of things. And I actually get a lot of clients too that have a really hard time updating or changing their logo because you just get used to that. But sometimes that's not bad. Um, just being used to something and having that association with your brand is sometimes all that you need a logo to do. Uh, let me know if you think it can be improved and how, what does the logo consist of, color, shapes, font, etc. Break it down, just like when we we're looking at these logos. Say you pick something, like I said, this is a circle and a rectangle. Uh, this is a panda that's made out of some basic shapes. Just do some analysis of the logo and describe what you're seeing. And if you're having trouble with that, jump back to our first lesson on principles and elements of design. Um, and what does the logo mean to you? What does it represent and signify? Uh, post an image if you can or you don't think we'll know what it is. And if it's popular enough, you could probably just name it. Um, like if it were Nike or McDonald's, we'd probably all be able to, to recognize what that is. So going back here, I also want you to do a quick assessment of your midterm progress. These are all skills that you should have by now. And you don't have to do these things perfectly, but they're things that you should know how to do. So you should be able to open and start a new document in Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign. In Illustrator, you should be able to be drawing with basic simple shapes by now and change colors and set type. In InDesign, you should be able to drop in files from other programs. Photoshop, we covered that two weeks ago with just basic layer masks. You should at least be able to do that. Um, and you should know the difference between JPEGs, EPS, PNG, and EPS files. And then just be able to start recognizing a couple different fonts. You should know what a sans serif versus a serif is. You should know if something's modern, script, handwritten, et cetera. So this is where you should be by now. If anything sounds like, wow, this I don't actually know what that is, just go back to the module where these lessons were and review them. And if you're really struggling with one of these things, reach out to me and I'll help support you with either an extra lesson, or I can make you a video, or we can just go over this together. So that's really, that's the content for the week. It's logo design. We're going to do that based on our project from last week. So if anyone was really struggling with last week, you don't need to know how to do that to move forward. But what it was intended to help you do is see the simplification and the breakdown of those shapes. There were only a couple turned in. Okay, so an EPS file is what you save out of Illustrator. And it's a more universal file than an AI file. So you could send it to a printer, you can drop it into InDesign, and it's a vector file that's infinitely scalable. There is a, let me screen share again. In the module for, I believe, week two, no, software basics. You can see this PDF of file formats. And this is something I actually send to my clients because they don't know what these files are. So they'll get their logo files or their brand package. And 
they'll send their JPEGs to the printer and then wonder why their sign is blurry. So I always support them by giving them this breakdown of what the different file formats are. And it's really useful. Um, I've no longer assumed that people know everything because <laughs> I used to just be like, here's your files. And then they wouldn't know how to use them. So now I give them things like that to help support that. Okay, so are we ready to jump into this week's assignment? And then we can backtrack and I'll help you with last week's if you're struggling with it. So again, remember, do your discussion board. And this week, what we are doing is taking our favorite image from last week and we're going to use it to develop a fictional set of logos. So I use my Boston Terrier, if you all remember from last week, and that is my logo. My name here for this sample is very not creative in any way, but I want you to take um, your favorite image and develop a fictional business around that. Let me stop sharing here for a second. I'm going to pull up some supplemental material. So since this is your first step into logo design, um, did anyone, I hope you picked images last week that you like, like you picked things that you're interested in or that you think are fun and not things that you're like, oh, I hate all of these. <laughs> if you did, you can redo your assignment from last week, but hopefully there's something in there that you find fun and creative. Let me pull up one of the assignments that was turned in from last week. Hold on, I'm downloading. Melissa, do you care if I use yours? You did a good job. Okay. I will pull it up here. And then give me just a second, I'll pull up a past assignment for this. I have a couple examples. All right. Any questions so far? All right. So to go over the assignment for this week, you're going to be taking what you did last week as a starting point. And let me actually go back here. Uh, okay, hold on, I'm not ready. I didn't want everybody's grades to pop up. Since I got that last assignment, okay.
Okay, so here's your assignment. Using what you learned about simplification in part one and two, select one of your images and develop four different logo concepts for one business. So I have Melissa's here as an example. This is her four favorite when I said to tile it together. This came out really nice. It looks like a really cool butterfly. It came from this image. She's got flowers and then these leaves. And then this is her, her thumbnails. So you can see here the different flower concepts and the different butterfly variations. So this is already a really good start into logo design. So what you would do is you would pick your favorite one here and pick your favorite set of thumbnails and decide where you wanna go with this. Um, your business can be about anything. Like I said, make it something that you think is fun and interesting. You're making it up. So it does not matter what it is. Um, it only matters that you can design around it and that it's something that you'll think is fun. So you decide the name of the business and the icon must be derived from one of your images in one and two. So the icon part of the logo must be from your project. You can't create something that's completely outside of that. Now, how much you simplify it and where that symbolism is conveyed is, conveyed is totally up to you. So you can really distill these into simple shapes, but you must derive it from one of your images from this last project. Logos are often designed for clients by giving them a set of options to choose from. So the goal of this project is to explore different ways to communicate a similar message as you make the logo increasingly more simplified. So logos should be designed in Illustrator and they must be vector files. So you're drawing in Illustrator. I will tell you right now, if you think this dog is intimidating and really well drawn, in order to show you a mock-up of what I meant, this is from stock photo. I didn't take the time to draw this dog. I could, it would take lots of time and I'd pull up the photo and draw over it and do all of those techniques. But this is from stock uh, illustration and I just distilled it and deleted parts of the illustration. So you don't have to do something this complicated, but, and I'll show you some examples from past students. Uh, begin with the most detailed concept first. So if you look at the sketches here, let's start with this butterfly. The butterfly will be a good example. Um, some of these butterflies have full details still inside. And then if you look at five, it's just the outline of a butterfly. So in order to do this, we'd start with this image here. Let me screenshot this and actually take it into Illustrator. Now you're not actually using this as the logo. You're just seeing how that simplifies and using this in your sketches. So doing this part is a fun way to get familiar with Photoshop and to just find and learn a new technique, but this isn't actually your logo. What you're doing now is taking that simplification and then sketching out these ideas. So begin with the most detailed concept. And then if you start there, you can just delete things to get to your more simplified concepts and see what you need and what you don't need. Um, as you progress to each new variation, determine what pieces of the first icon you design can be eliminated. Your fourth design option should be the most simplified and streamlined. Um, you have free range on typography, but be thoughtful about how it pairs with your icon. So your typography can be whatever you'd like it to be, but make sure it fits and it's intentional and that it matches. After your logo designs are complete, you will be submitting them in a presentation. You should create the presentation as if you're sending it to a client for approval. It can be created in InDesign or you can make multiple artboards in Illustrator. You're submitting a five page PDF, so that's five pages with one logo concept per page and a final page with the four options all together. So what you should be doing is showing the four pages with each logo option in color and black and white. And then your fifth page shows all of the color versions together so the client can really see um, the difference between the logos and compare them next to each other. 
You can style your logo presentation however you choose. How will you impress your client? So you can just be really simple like I did here, but if you want to put a lot into it and make a snazzy presentation with your name and all of that, feel free to do that. So I'm going to jump into Illustrator here. Y'all ever see like my desktop with past stuff and wonder what <laughs> I'm working on? If you ever have questions, I'm happy to go through like, this is what I worked on today. Sometimes it's not that exciting, but sometimes it is. So go to my desktop and place some things that I just screen captured. My desktop is a mess right now. That means that I have a lot going on. So if I pull off these, Melissa really lucks out because I'm using you as an example. So I hope this doesn't hinder, only helps your creative process. So we have here this butterfly. This is our start, starting off point. The business can be whatever, and she may not even choose the butterfly. She might decide to go with the flower or something else, but um, the butterfly is a good example for this. So you would take this butterfly as your example. You can even draw over this if you'd like, or you just look at the butterfly as a guide and you'll be making a vector file that has this butterfly. So I'm really quickly just going to trace over the wings. I actually recently did a butterfly logo for a cycling company, like a spin class type of thing. And then let's see, let me zoom in here. making a butterfly as quickly as I can. Here is the head. Here are the antenna. And then, you know, if you're really into insects, you probably know they have like a couple body parts, but I'm just gonna make it one line the sake of doing this easily today. And then let's say, for example, we even go through, just use the brush tool really quickly and make some of these swooping inside shapes that a butterfly has. Now you can take the time for your most complex logo and make it as detailed as you'd like. Again, just remember I'm doing this for the sake of showing you the assignment. And I'm sure a lot of you are watching me do this really quickly and thinking like, oh, wow, I wish I could even just get there. And you will. It just, I've been doing this a long time. So here's my very messy butterfly. And let's pretend this is my first logo for business X. Just, I don't want to hinder Melissa in any way with her project, so I'm not going to name this anything that's realistic. And it's a butterfly, so how about some nice flowy script here? If this were my project, I would also be choosing colors. Unlock this layer. So if you do not know, how to add artboards in Illustrator. It's this tool right over here. And you click on that and then go over to properties and you can just hit this plus sign right here and you can go one, two, three, four, five. So now I have five artboards for this assignment. And you can also do this in InDesign if you've gotten really comfortable in InDesign and you prefer. So, this first logo should be in color. Let me just fill in. I'm going to create a color version of this logo by filling in these leaves and giving the type of color. So this would be an example of the first one. And then you can absolutely just copy this over and start eliminating elements. Like say maybe this next version of this logo, I don't want the inside marks on it.
create an outline of the type just so I can grab everything easier. Yes, you should always be worried about color theory. <laughs> I'm using this as an example, um, but I have, you know, an analogous monochromatic color palette going on. I chose all blues. Really, this blue that I picked is not a very good blue. It doesn't really, um, it's hard to see. So what would probably be more practical is maybe something like, maybe a gray or so. But yeah, you should always be thinking about color theory and how everything fits together. Same thing with typography. But as you move on, you can literally just delete things. But here's, here's a trick to this. Say my next version just didn't have those spots on the inside of the logo. Remember this lower version has to be in one color, so black and white. When I get to my next version, how am I gonna simplify this again? You could just delete that, but what's left is something that doesn't mean anything. It may not be very identifiable. So think about that. Um, maybe the elements are broken apart and you start moving them. There's a lot of butterfly logos. You could pay attention to how like they're used in different ways. Um, you can scale this down. You can connect it in some way. So it doesn't have to be just a straight, like delete, delete, delete. Give some thought to it. And then maybe the next one is just the outline. Maybe you look at this and you think something like, like a swooping line would work. And that's your new logo. So see how this is derived from this, but it's not you know, the exact same thing. So think about it in those different ways. And then when you get to this, each one should have the colored version and then the black and white version. And then this page will be this. And this all in a row so that I can compare. And you can switch up your typography per logo too if you want to give extra choices and just explore your typography a little bit more. But the main thing I want you to focus on is how to first take an image like this butterfly and how would you simplify it into something that could work as a logo? Once you've got it there, how do you simplify it even more to still convey the meaning you wanna convey, but distill it down into something that's a really simple mark and then show them all together. So I just made that look, did I make that look easy or are you all thinking that looks hard? <laughs> <laughs> so going back to my example, I did the same thing here. Say I start with this dog, it's contained in a rectangle, there's a shadow, there's lots of detail. Example two, I popped it out of that rectangle, it's just the dog. Example three, I decided to use just the face of that dog. Example four, it's a silhouette, a very simplified outline of the face of the dog, and then I have my examples. So if we go back to this, all of these could be done in the same way. This flower can be broken down like a full flower and then just simple elements of the flower and this leaf, the same thing. It could start off as like a full leaf design and then maybe going to the outline and maybe just going to a swoopy shape. But that's the point of this assignment is that you start looking at these images and looking at how you can break them down and adapt them into logo design. Let's see, did I miss anything you need to know? Anybody have any questions on this? So when it comes to drawing an illustrator, remember the pen tool is your best friend. Remember to use the shape tools 
you don't always have to draw everything from scratch. You can use the shape tools to get places like, like we did with those fruits in the beginning. Um, look at how you can break things down um, and just get like simple shapes out of things. You can trace over things. That's always a really easy way to do it. And if you're intimidated by drawing an illustrator and you have something really complex for your logo design, you can always switch it out. Let me screen share again. So here is an example from a past semester. It's bee activewear. So the student started with this little bee illustration. And I think this is really clever because, you know, it's in a hexagon shape. It kind of reminds you of honeycombs. And that's the logo. And the bee is a complete illustration of a bee. You see how simple it is? Um, obviously, the assignment was a picture, like a photograph of a bee. And this was the illustration that the student used. So it was derived from that, but it doesn't even have to be directly related to that. So then be active where same thing that I kind of did with the dog. It follows a very similar pattern. The bee is broken out of that container and it's just floating by itself. Um, even the type that was used is um, script kind of shows movement. So that's a good choice. Um, you could probably play around with like the way the type is broken down instead of just two lines, give it a little more hierarchy. Like I would probably do something like be active and then sportswear as like a tag. So break up those two elements and make sure that it's like more of a hierarchy and you read the name of this business the way you want to name it. Um, and then it's broken down into just this head and then it's broken down into just a silhouette of the head, which probably is the most memorable and efficient way to do the logo. But again, you have to decide what's appropriate for your client. And sometimes illustrative logos can be really um, useful and fun. I've done a lot of illustrated logos for clients over the years. And um, when I speak to like classes or like groups, I always have this PowerPoint with some of my logos in it. And uh, one of the logos I did several years ago is for a business called Bookhounds. And that client wanted her own dogs illustrated into the logo. And it's really cute and fun. And whenever people see it in my presentation, they always go, oh, I know that place. So even though it's very detailed, it's still really memorable and significant. This is another example that a student did. I would say this one isn't as effective and clear as this one, but you can still see how they went from their assignment last week, the previous assignment, and broke it down into a simpler and simpler version of the logo. But again, this particular student took their image from last week and used it pretty much straight up. And that's really hard to do versus taking it as inspiration and then doing something like this. So that's it. That's what you're going to do. You're going to design logos this week. And if you have any questions, I am here if you want to talk it out or if you need help with your simplification assignment from last week, I am here to show you how to do it. Okay. We can, I know that was pretty quick tonight, but um, yeah, it's St. Patrick's Day. You might all need just a little relaxation <laughs> or you might have something fun planned. And so I'll just let you go and I'll stick around for help. And the next week is illustration week. It will be a much more in-depth lecture. Um, and I really wanna give you a lot of support to help you try to do um, something for the runner that could be published. Okay. Yeah, um, the simplification assignment, when you think of the colors, uh, like that's kind of it's kind of a wild pop art assignment so you can just pick colors that you like it's okay if they're bright and vivid and most of them are so just have fun with the colors on that one okay anybody have questions okay if you don't have any questions you're free to go and have a great evening. <laughs>
And I'll see you next week. Don't forget to do the yep. discussion. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, Professor. Bye. I actually do have a question. Okay. I I did people for the assignment. I could redo the assignment, right? And like change my... You can, but a lot of times people do things like just focus on the eye and like do like cosmetics company or like lip, like facial features. Um, so it just depends. I haven't, I don't remember seeing yours. Do you want me to look at it really quickly? Yeah, it's, okay. uh, I submitted it last night. Oh, I did. I must have seen it then because I did look at all the ones that were submitted. I just can't remember. Well, it was like early this morning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Let me look at it and I'll help give you some ideas. And you're always more than welcome to just start with, over with okay. something. Yeah, so you've got. And good. Uh, the, I had read the first instructions and then when I got to the second, I like regretted picking people because I had no idea how to draw. <laughs> so what's good about people is I would just distill it into one feature. Like you have Sandra Bullock in there. You could just do an eye. You can do the lips. Um, think about it more in terms of the B where it's like, you know, you're just taking something like that as a jumping off point for inspiration. Um, even if you wanted to do something like hair, you're more than welcome to start over, but I think that there's, you did a good job with this assignment. So if it was easy for you and you want to start over with something new, you can, but um, people can give lots of good, like starting points. Just think of it in like a clever way that um, you can go to Logo Pond as well, that link that I shared. And I think you could type in people and get like, some ideas like maybe it's a chef like maybe you turn someone into a chef or like take a feature out of there like a nose or an ear or something so I don't know if that sounds as fun as having like a butterfly but you can work with it if you want to okay thank you you're welcome Brianna did you want to um I do I just have a Oh yeah, Priscilla can go because I didn't know if she want. I wanted you to show me something of the last assignment. So if she wants to go first, she can. Okay. Priscilla, do you want to go? Yeah, I have a question. So um, um, so I want to just ask the uh the um, the assignment I sent it. Did you see it? Right? I just see. Let me look. This I last want to just make sure if it's yeah, the last one is the project. I saw you got it, so I want to just make sure if I understand good, like, <laughs> and that way I can keep doing it for the rest one, because I'm really struggling for that class, so I was just trying my best. So I don't see your assignment from last week, but I know you have, you have your poster in, and you had to- Yeah, with the project, right? I, I, I use, um, you talk about the one we have to present, right? Oh yes, did you want to present it for points? I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah you can, mm -hmm. um, here, let me pull it up and you can just talk about it. Okay. And take a minute to and look. Just make sure if I understand good, because. I'm struggling. Okay. So if you just want to talk about what we were, you know, what we covered when we were going over the critiques for these, like what your, st your historical style is, how you incorporate mm -hmm. that into your modern issue, and then what you learned from copying the style. So I pretty much <laughs> did it for myself, like I tried. <laughs> It was funny and um i learned how to use um to draw it was my first time so i learned it and it it was not easy though so i don't know how to stand up and my um the things i draw it was just to present like ukraine because the things who happen in ukraine with uh, the african people over there mm -hmm. so i think they need voice 
like from Bali to today, uh, talk about it. So because they can talk, they can say anything. So when you see um the end over the the mounds, mean like they need some help. So even uh, like all the African people, everybody else who is now in Ukraine or wherever, they can talk about it. So that way they have voice. So if you can see, I just was like, we need help your voice come something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just like uh, they're calling for help. Like everybody can help. Yeah. I can tell that even with your, <laughs> with your struggling with the programs, you had a good understanding of the style and you need to put a lot of things in there. Um, I would say you just have to remember to create more of a hierarchy and have like an impact piece of this, you know, like mm -hmm. one thing that really, um, cause everything, you have lots of small things taking up space. You need like one big impact image and then maybe fill it down that with some of the smaller things. But I can definitely tell that you understood the style and I like that you applied it to something that. Yeah, but I try to make my image a little bigger, but mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, I try to make also in the middle so that way we can mm -hmm. uh, see it more. But yeah. I can do it. Well, you did a good job. I can tell that you, <laughs> you're trying to catch up here. So just keep plugging yeah, away, like that. just go through, watch all of those videos, keep following the modules. Um, last week's pretty, pretty easy, use easy as a relative term, but last week it's just step-by-step. Step. And like, I think Brianna even mentioned like it gets a little monotonous, but you can just follow those steps as you do the programs. And so. Yeah, don't don't let yourself get too far behind. Keep working. Yeah, I try my best. I already sent a couple, like your three, three more, I think. Yeah, I saw. I did see some of your other assignments come in. So keep working away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just don't let yourself get too far behind. That's when it gets really tough. Um, yeah. And then next week is illustration week, so. You'll probably like that as well because it's a little more free as far as which programs you get to use. Oh, okay. So I don't have to use uh, Adobe. You don't special. necessarily have to use Adobe. Oh, you have to follow the. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after that, we're going to get back into Adobe programs. So, but next week, because I'm moving up Illustration, you get another little break from, from the Adobe programs. And for this week. Is the same? We have to use Adobe, right? You have to use Illustrator, yes. Okay. Thank you, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, Professor. You're welcome. <laughs> um, Professor, I wish I could, I wish I could show you my work for what I have done, but Photoshop does not work on my computer. All the other programs do just not Photoshop. So when you ask me to use that program, I have to go to my best friend's house and use oh, her. No. So, which is fine. And I, I didn't feel like buying a computer, a new one, because this is the only class that I really needed for that program. So I was like, I can't really spend a thousand dollars right now, but um, I got most of it done, but I don't know how to make them into the four squares. Like, I feel like I ha I picked a boxer dog and I totally, it looks really cool, but I feel like I put it on too big of a paper on Photoshop. And so when I moved it from photos, well, when I moved it, into the indes or to um, InDesign, it came out so big. And if I cropped it to make it the square, I lost like half of my image. Oh, so you weren't you just weren't grabbing the right piece of it to scale it. Um, it's just an InDesign thing. Honestly, that is the least important part of this assignment. So <laughs> I was like, I did. I, I literally like I did. I picked the three things. Um, and I did them all, but putting it into a grid for the four squares, oh my God, I couldn't do it for the life of me. And I just Oh, lost. I'm sorry. Yeah, I go over it. If you watch the class video from last time, I think I show Melissa how to do it. And I meant, I even say like, oh, I meant to show everybody this and I forgot. So I do go over it in the video, but honestly, that's the least important part of the assignment. If that's what's really frustrating you, just turn them in individually. Oh, I did do it. I did. I did yeah. do that. Just turn them in the way that they are, and I understand. But I can show you how to do that if you want me to. 
if, if you if, if you have the time if not yeah. it's really good. I thought you know am I supposed to like start out with the photo and make it smaller from the beginning before I do all of my you know design work on it and then I thought oh crap I gotta start freaking all over again so InDesign will let you scale and size anything you want on this page but if I go to Like if I pull up one of my images and I just place it in, see how big it is? Yeah, and then when I try to crop it, like I lost the dog's face. I lost. Yeah, so if you crop it like this, that's actually only moving the frame. So InDesign works by putting everything in a frame. Uh -huh. And that's so that you can, ideally, once you understand InDesign, it makes everything easier. But if you don't, it's really frustrating. So if you try to scale this, you're losing your image. But that's because this is inside a frame and you have to get this other arrow over here and click on that. And that's the image. Okay. So don't click the actual corner. Click like, not like the corner edge. Click like the middle of like the corner, right? It's more about which arrow you have, if that makes sense. So if I use this direct selection arrow at the very top of my toolbar, I've grabbed the entire frame. Uh -huh. And I can move around the frame and I can scale the frame. But if I use this arrow underneath it, that's the direct selection. This is the selection arrow. This is the direct okay. selection arrow. Then I'm grabbing the image inside of that frame. So I'm technically only scaling what's inside. Let me turn on my. That makes, okay. That makes so much more sense. Okay. So if I turn on my framed edges, you'll see here, my frame is still really big and I've just scaled down the image inside of it. So if you wanna scale the whole thing together, you have to have your selection arrow and use something like the scale tool and then it'll scale the whole thing. So now that I have this scaled small and I use the scale tool. And so you grab the top arrow, your direct arrow, and then you, then you grab the scale. Yes, and then I click in the middle and then I can scale it. Okay. So you can also, if you drag it in, so I went to file place last time, but if I just were to drag this in, I can also click before, like while well, it's just kind of hovering and get it like this. And then once you have it the size you want, that's when you can just duplicate it. And then the next thing you drop in by hitting Command D, it'll automatically size it for you. Okay. But that's the, that's the weird difference in InDesign is that everything's put into a frame. So technically, if I'm moving the frame with this, this arrow, I'm not moving the image as well, unless I get something like the scale tool and then I'm scaling everything within the frame. Okay, I was freaking out, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, that can be really frustrating when you don't understand the difference because you're like, why is this not scaling? Because that's how Illustrator works, right? So that's yeah. one of the differences between the two and I know that can be really frustrating. Um, so go ahead and give that a try. But like I said, that is the least important part about that assignment. <laughs> so okay. don't obsess over that. Don't let that hang you up on it. Um, I do if, not if to obsess. I do, but like, I, and I'm not even a perfectionist. I'm really not. But when it comes to this class, I just want it to look good. And it, I, I get so frustrated and I, I'm not, I'm not a creative person, but I, I want to be able to do these things to be proud of myself to say I did it. So I yeah. feel like the patience, you know? Yeah. And I mean, there's a lot of ways you can work around this. Like you could have, you can do the same thing in Illustrator. You can do the same thing in Photoshop. So if you've got the technique down and you're just like InDesign is not letting me do it. Once you move past this class and you're doing these things, like you don't have to do it this <laughs> exact way. You can do it how it works for you, but this is technically the proper way to put, to composite images like this and put them together. So, um, but yeah, give it a try. That's what was going on. Um, is InDesign your favorite program to use out of all three of the Adobe programs? Like, 
do you have a favorite? I, I guess I like Illustrator because I do a lot of actual drawing, but if I'm laying out anything, whether it's a flyer or any kind of multi-page document, I use InDesign because it's so efficient. So once you understand how to use it, it's really quick and efficient and you just don't have the same control in Illustrator for like lots of words and things like that. So I really like InDesign, but it's not, it's hard to say that's my favorite program because it's like, so if you look at the stuff I have open on here, mm -hmm. like, oh, you still. <laughs> that's cool. This is a multi-page sponsor sponsorship document. That's this <laughs> was created in Illustrator. So I have all of these vector files. This is created in Illustrator. And then I drop it into InDesign because if I was actually trying to lay out this document with all of this text in InDesign or in Illustrator, it would be incredibly frustrating. But now I have all of this type and everything in here. And then like this part of it is even like interactive where it's a form. Mm. So I had to use both. So it's really not like I like this better or this better. And that's what a lot of people who are just starting out fall under that trap of, I just like using this program better, <laughs> but you can't, you don't have the same control to do certain things in between them, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a fan of illustrator. I am not a fan of Photoshop because I, there's just so many things I know I can't do in there. Whereas illustrator is just, there's so much free range. Yeah. Illustrator is a great program and you can get by, like, if you know illustrator, well, you can do a lot of things in it. Photoshop is just image editing software. So the fact that that's the one that doesn't work on your computer is probably it's a good thing. Okay. Okay. Um, but it also takes, it might just be a memory thing too. Like if you have all your other programs shut down or if you uninstall it and try to reinstall, that's so weird that that's the one that's not working, but. Um, yeah, it always freezes and says not responding. And then I constantly like the moment I put an image up, like a photo, oh, it just crashes every single time. Yeah, your computer just can't maintain yeah, it. it. Yeah, so I was yeah. like, well, I'll just do my best for now until the class, until it's over. Because I'm a senior, this will be my last semester, so. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot more to do in Photoshop. Um, really, we're going to focus on, like, next week, it's illustration. So you can use Illustrator, obviously, or you can really, you can draw even if that's what you prefer. And then we'll do more InDesign with layout. And then um, when we get into branding, it's basically Illustrator and InDesign. So you won't have to worry that much about Photoshop unless you want to edit an image. <laughs> okay. Professor, thank you so much for taking the time to help me out with that because I really was stressing. So thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. It's not, it's really not you. It's, it's really just me and my own patience and trying to understand a program. I just need to just not get so angry. No, at but I understand. I've been trying to make myself learn one new thing like a week. And so like this week, I, or, I just did a tutorial. I was following along with someone else's tutorial and I was like, wait, wait, why isn't this working? <laughs> and then I rewatched it and I was like, oh, I don't have this right. So I'm trying to put myself in all of your shoes more often so that I can, don't skip steps or, you know, figure out those gaps. And I know it can be really frustrating. So that's why I always say, just stop and ask me, don't like get too worked up over it, but yeah. Well, thank you very much. Hope you have a nice St. Patrick's Day. You too. Thanks. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.